the saying goes, taxes are a necessary evil. They fund critical infrastructure like schools and bridges. But according to the Congressional Budget Office, in fiscal year 2016, Congress appropriated $310 billion to 256 programs that are no longer authorized. Hello and welcome to Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly. And joining me is Thomas Schatz, the president of Citizens Against Government Waste. Thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you. So let's first of all talk about what authorized even means. What is the process of authorization, authorization to certain um, uh, federal agencies? And what's not being done in your view? The budget process works where it's supposed to work with the president proposing a budget Budget committees in the House and Senate approve a budget resolution, and then the authorizing committees are supposed to approve and authorize programs and agencies. This is on the discretionary side of the budget, meaning not Social Security, not Medicare, not Medicaid. All of the federal agencies that people would normally think about, veterans, state, justice, that goes through the authorization process, as well as independent agencies like the EPA. Then it goes to the appropriations committees where they approve what's called outlays. So there's an authorized amount of money and then there's an appropriated amount of money or an outlay. That's what actually gets spent. The authorization is really permission to spend the money. And when that step is skipped, the appropriations committees have to do all the work. And it's not really their job. In fact, there's a rule that says that legislation is not allowed on an appropriations bill. In other words, the authorizing piece of it really isn't supposed to be there, but that rule gets waived and then they keep doing it and it's gotten so big that $310 billion is almost half of the non-defense discretionary budget. Defense usually gets authorized. A lot of other things don't. Now, in terms of the authorization, the money that comes to, organ uh, to uh, federal agencies like the FBA, the FBI and the DEA, for example, that are not authorized at this time, if they get the money, they can still function. So this is more of an accountability practice. Now, let's say that you start looking into these, these uh, agencies. Is there something that you believe you'll find amiss or that money that will be saved if they did go through this process of being authorized? The, the oversight is done through the authorizing committees. So therefore, a program that may not be effective might be eliminated or reformed, or a new program might be initiated that could do the job better than an old program. What happens without the authorization is that a lot of things that have been going on for many years just keep going because the appropriators really cannot make those decisions. And there are two agencies, Federal Election Commission and the Legal Services Corporation, that have not been reauthorized since the 95th and 96th Congresses. It's a long time ago. It Others haven't, haven't been reauthorized for six years. So the legislation addresses all of that. So ultimately, this legislation, as it addresses it, uh, I guess the purpose of it, is it to save money? That's not the objective. The okay. objective is to get the authorizing committees to do their job. And do doing job. so, they probably would save money because they'd be able to consider the effectiveness and even whether certain programs should exist at all today and what might be done differently in the future. Mm -hmm. And so, what do you foresee as something that might be changed or would there be a big shift perhaps if the authorizing process was done in its entirety? Well, the State Department is a good example. It hasn't been reauthorized in many years. Certainly things have changed around the world. It needs updating. That's really the key point is update, consider whether or not something's working well, and then determine whether or not Congress should be doing it and how much should be spent. It's a wonderful opportunity to do Congress's basic job, which is to consider how the money is being spent, conduct oversight, and then figure out how much uh, you're going to want to spend on the appropriation side. So the bill takes all of the existing 256 programs, puts them on a three-year pass to sunset or termination, no funding, 90% reduction in the first year if it's not reauthorized in the first year, and then 85%, all from current levels, in the second year, and then 85% in the third year, and then at the end of the third year, it's sunset. It also goes beyond that because it looks at all the other programs that have been authorized and says, you're also going to be sunset. After that first three-year period, they'll look at everything else. So this is, unfortunately, legislation telling Congress to do what they're supposed to do, which is to go through the process, examine the programs, hold hearings, bring up the agency heads, and say, this is 
working well, this is not working well, let's figure out what we're doing with the taxpayers' money. I just want to close out by, by asking you if this does happen. You know, we're talking about over a couple of hundred agencies. How long would that process take? Well, it depends how much Congress wants to work, but with the threat of 90% <laughs> yeah. of the funding versus 100 and then 85%, that's a substantial cut. It should be enough incentive to get them to do what they're supposed to do. All right. Interesting information. Thank you so much for being with us and sharing it. Good to see you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for this edition of Comcast Newsmakers. I'm Candace Kelly.